We're slowly creeping out of that rush hour. That's it for traffic. It is time to ask the pet doctor today, and Dr. Jerome Williams is here. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? It's good to be here again. Good to see you too. Jillian is all ready to take some phone calls. Yes, she is. All right, shall we get to it? We have Lynn and Dora. Lynn, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. What's your question? I would like to know if um, dogs like the, the pit bull and the Rottweiler, who have such a bad reputation, are they instinctively uh, mean dogs, or is it a matter of how they're raised? It's uh, mostly how they are raised. Now, there are some that are bred and developed as uh, hunting dogs or fighting dogs or protective dogs. That instinct is there, uh, and you got those two distinct lines. But behavior is also a learned thing, so it depends on the environment they are in and the condition they get early on. Uh, many dogs just are protective. Uh, mm -hmm. Your dog at home is protective mm -hmm. of you, mm -hmm. and that can be further enhanced by the way you train and encourage them. I guess some dogs do learn differently, though, than others, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, they do. Okay. I hope that answers your question, Lynn. Yes, thank you very much. I've always wondered that. Okay. Let's go to Tracy. She's in Trafford. Tracy, good morning. Good morning. Um, I've got a Pomeranian, and he keeps eating on his front paws. And it, it, I'm, it's getting where the, there's no skin, and I'm just wondering Aww. what to do. It sounds like, it sounds like you may have an allergy going on. So, uh, is it also involving the ears and the rear? Does he, does he tend to uh, rub a uh, bite at the rear as well? Sometimes he slides on the rear on the carpet. The, the combination that Dr. Hubbard has taught us is that often you have food allergies right. if it's involving the feet the ears and the rear. Okay, well he quit eating dry dog food. I give him bologna every now and then. <laughs> it's the, the protein in the food that causes a problem. Usually it's a, a meat protein like uh, beef or chicken mm -hmm. or one of those, uh, even wheat or, or, or rice can be uh, the causative allergen problem. So with what you've told me, I suspect you may have a food allergy and you want to talk to your veterinarian about it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Good luck, hon. Thank we had to cut chicken totally out of our dog's diet because Dr. Williams was treating him constantly for ear infections. Right. And right. so you guys helped us discover that it was chicken. So now he gets to eat salmon. So <laughs> Dolores is in Birmingham. Hey, Dolores, how are you? Good morning. How are you? Good. What's your question? I have a dog that has a cherry eye. Is, <coughs> is there such a, a diagnosis for that? Yeah, there is a cherry eye. There's a gland. It's the Hardarian gland. It's underneath the third eyelid, and that gland becomes infected. And surgery is required generally to correct that. The gland is uh, tucked back under that third eyelid. Now, treatment will clear it up often for a while, but almost always it has to have surgery. Okay, the dog is about two years old. Is he too old to have no. it removed? No, they're never too old to have it done. How expensive okay. is something like that? I don't know. I don't know. So she uh, would have to check with check, a surgeon. Right, right. Uh, what what kind of don't? medicine can I use to put in there until I have the surgery done? Any ophthalmic antibiotic uh, with an anti-inflammatory will help to control the problem. If it continues and you don't get it removed, it may cause an ulcer to the eyeball. Okay, so you've got to do something. Right. Many veterinarians do that in their offices. Mm -hmm. If not, then she can refer to one of the okay. three ophthalmologists in town. Okay. It, um, okay, thank you. Thanks, honey. Mm -hmm. I know that's, a, that's difficult. You want to go ahead and get something done. Yes. Uh, Christine is in McCalla. Christine, good morning. Good morning. Go ahead with your question. Uh, I was calling to ask uh, the doctor about, uh, I've got a year and a half old poodle, and um, he keeps coughing like he's choking or got a hairball, and I was wondering uh, what can I do for that. Christine, how long has this been going on? A um, couple of weeks. It may be allergy when the allergy season uh, could be an infection. So many things could be causing it. And we're getting into the mosquito season, which is also hardworm season. So that's another possible cause. But if it's just going on two weeks and we're in the allergy season, that'll be my first consideration that it may be an allergy causing it. So what uh, should we do? Uh, what can I give him? Any of the regular allergy medis medication like Benadryl. So the human over-the-counter? The human over-the-counter Benadryl at the dose of one milligram per pound. So a dog that size, probably the pediatric 12 and a half milligram size, would uh -huh. probably be appropriate. Okay, and he's an indoor dog. 
Yes. Even so, even indoor uh, pets can have allergies this time of year. Okay. If that doesn't do it, then get them to your veterinarian. So try the Benadryl first. Ab exactly. Okay. Okay. Thank y'all so much. Okay. Y'all have a great, blessed day. Love y'all show. Oh, thanks. We love you too. Thank you very much. All right. Is, is Carol next? Is it Carol? Um, actually, it's Nancy. Now. Hey, Nancy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Nancy. Um, that's okay. Um, and I'm from McCullough. Um, I have a Belgian Malinois, mm -hmm. and he is trained real well as far as sit down stay shut you know all of that stuff but if he is outside and i want him you know to come in for something he gets real skittish and he, if i like even pull a tick off of him which he is on front line but if i pull a tick off of him or if he's got a scratch and i want to look at it he won't come near me for two or three days oh wow <laughs> he's just, he doesn't like being messed with, and I'm wondering what can I do to get him to, I mean, how do I train him to come to me? You just got to keep working with him. Uh, somewhere or another he had a bad experience, I would think. Well, I think he did. He got loose when he was a puppy, and my son tackled him like a football player. Right. It's going to require a lot of positive reinforcement. I can't give you any specific ways to do that, but uh, you're going to probably need to get with a behaviorist. But positive reinforcement probably is going to be the best bet to try to get that confidence back and make him feel comfortable doing things. Now, what you may also want to do is just rub, pet, mess with the paws, the ears, the rest of the body when you're not trying to do something specifically. That's yeah, what, that's and what I do that, and he'll let me brush him. Yeah. And, you know, he'll lay right here beside me, let me pet him. And but everything. when you do something he doesn't just... like, that's when he stays away. Yeah, okay. uh, he just, once he's outside and I try to get him in, he's suspicious of why I want him in and he doesn't want to come. <laughs> he sounds very smart. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, he is. He's a right. great dog. Well, well, good luck. And I guess all you can do right now is just kind of work with him and see exactly. what happens or help get some professional help. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all, all right. the time. Thank you. Thanks, honey. That is all the time we have. Good to see you. Always good to be here. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be back.